What is up, everybody? This is Andrew Richardson, and we are live on Roll for Persuasion, the podcast that focuses on creators, entrepreneurs, creatives, builders in the D&D and tabletop communities. We love to talk to people who are taking their love of the game and they are doing something with it outside of the table. Uh, We talk to woodworkers, we talk to cosplayers, we talk to podcasters, we talk to people producing content, we talk to artists, musicians, anyone out there who is taking their passion and love of gaming and community and they're finding ways to put more of what they love into the world, those are the people we love to talk to. And that is what this show is all about. Before we get going with my guest, I just want to say again, you guys can follow us on social media, primarily Instagram and Twitter are both at Roll Persuasion. If you listen to any prior episodes, you will actually hear probably four different versions of our social media handles, and that's because getting the social media handle that you want is tricky, but we've managed to pull it off, so at Roll Persuasion on both Twitter and Instagram. And of course, make sure that you subscribe. If you are on Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review. We love your feedback as a new podcast. That is what will help us get in front of more people. Those ratings are vital. Um, If you don't listen on iTunes, Spotify is a great option. We have a lot of listeners on Spotify, so shout out to our Spotify listeners. Make sure you follow us there. We appreciate every single one of you. So I'm very excited today. I got a guest on that I've been chatting with for a while. I follow him on Twitter. Um, Great guy producing great content in the community. Uh, Fjord, what is going on, man? How are you doing? Well, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on here. Absolutely, dude. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, give us a quick overview, man, of of what what do you do? What what kind of stuff do you produce? You put some pretty cool content out there. Um, in a nutshell, what what are you doing right now? Well, you know, it it all started with just uh, as a hobby, creating just subclasses. You know, fifth edition when when it first came out, it didn't have a lot. We didn't have Xanthars, sure, sure, or Xanthars, however you pronounce it. Um, you had the player's handbook, and that was it. You didn't even have the DMG or the monster manual yet. And then shortly those three books were all you had was those. Right. And so me and other people playing the game, there'd always be like, Oh, I wish you could do this and started making some content there. And then a friend of mine started creating a sci-fi game and he's like, Hey, you're pretty good at putting together classes. Why don't you make some classes for my sci-fi game? So then I started coming up with a whole list of of classes where we took the theme of of 5e and said what if these classes were sci-fi uh versions um that never came to uh fruition but i really enjoyed just the 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 process the the way 5e characters are built really sets into my brain in such a way that just drives me i love making characters uh, my NPCs are start to finish character sheets. Like there is much characters in a game uh, as the player characters are for me, especially when I'm running a game. I, I like knowing who and where, who and what these characters are because it helps create motivation when I role play these NPCs with my players. Totally. Instead of just being this NPC has wants you to go do this. Why he, here's Bob. He has some that? rats in his basement, and if you kill the rats, he will give you gold. The end. Yeah, it, that's an the MMO quest giver. I didn't. I, right, you know, right. I, I don't like doing that. I love role playing my characters, um, and you know, I try and do them in full voice if I can. But I'm not much of a. Uh, I'm I'm pretty decent at delivering lines, but not accents. That's just not me. But so I continued doing it in. I decided to start sharing some of it on Twitter and that got to be um, pretty uh, popular Sure, and people were enjoying it. So then I, from there kind of to keep myself motivated, I started saying, well, when I hit this many followers, I'll put this out. And when I hit this many followers, I'll put that out. And there was also the the secondary goal of I want to have one subclass for every class. Yeah, yeah. So I kept going through and building upon it each class at a time. And some some turned out, and I love them. Others I want to go back and fix. But I've gone through all the major classes now, 
And eventually I, th I, I would like to combine them into like a, a condensed set. Awesome. So yeah, that's actually, that, that was one of the things I, I kind of first found about you was that was the content you were putting out, um, which is, is pretty cool. And, and it's kind of interesting, like you were saying the, the background, like with the, with kind of the sci-fi theme, are, are there any like, are there any characters or, or stuff that you did, like you said, that didn't come to fruition um, that you particularly enjoyed that you've either like reused or kind of re kind of jiggered for, for, you know, non sci fi five years or one that you just kind of remember you were like, Oh, you know what? That was kind of cool. Like I, I wish I could, you know, go back to that someday. Yeah, actually um, there was a few where I, I had a foundation for originally doing something um, in the sci-fi realm and it, I liked the framework of it and thought, well, I should make use of that. That would still fit into fifth edition. You know, you just got to take out the sci-fi elements. <laughs> right. Um, but I tried Instead of a to spaceship. Do, it's a horse, right? Yeah. I think one of the, one of the subclasses I really wanted to do, but I, I put a lot of polls on Twitter. Like when I was getting down to doing the Druid, um, I had one, which was the, the circle of the Cleopatra, which was something okay. I was going to recycle from sci-fi where as a druid, you were shape shifting yourself into insects instead of, uh, beasts. So, and you would eat, could even like, instead of where the circle, of the druid could turn into an elemental, you could change yourself into like a bug warrior type, uh, setup. Right. But I put it for a vote because there was also Circle of the Fae Wild, and people voted for the Fae Wild. So I did a a fairy follower companion build kind of thing for Druid, and went with that instead. That's what people voted for. I would still like to go back uh, and do the Cleopatra, but right now I want to get the first set done. Um, pinned to my Twitter is kind of the roadmap for where I'm going from here. All the classes are done now that I'm at 1700 followers. I got to do a background. I say got to do it, but I'm, I'm going to do it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. It, it <laughs> is, it's your privilege to do a background, right? And I had some great suggestions from people on Twitter um, for backgrounds. And so I want to go through those suggestions again and kind of pick one or two. I've never made a background, so I'm not sure how much work is going to go into it there. The backgrounds are usually a page to a page and a quarter in the player's handbook. So I try and keep most of my stuff to a page because it just works really well on Twitter and everything sure, I yeah. do is free. I don't charge for anything. So all my material goes out to, to the public for free. Um, I don't do DMs guild and then right. don't have any intention of doing it. Sure. It's, it's just a something I do for the people that follow. That's awesome. It, I, I hope that you do go back to visit that Druid idea because um, I don't know if you saw the most recent uh, UA, the Unearthed Arcana that came out that had a, a ranger yeah. archetype that's the Swarm Which should Keeper. should have been a Druid. Yeah, I know. And that's what everybody said, right? And uh, <laughs> yeah. and and it's all about, for, for those of you who haven't read it yet, go check it out. UA is always fun. Um, it's play testing, right? It's, it's there for you to play with and, and mess around with and see how it works in your game and see if it's broken or if it needs you know buffing, whatever. But there's this uh, the Swarm Keeper ranger archetype which again should have been a druid and uh yeah. but it's it's a cool concept right the the, the communing with you know insect life yeah. versus you know you know beasts um so i think it's you should definitely do soft. that yeah it, it's a, it's a little yeah it could use some work so i'd be interested in seeing you kind of putting your uh yeah. your hand to it um yeah. going going back a little bit i think i think we talked earlier you and i are about the same age kind of you know <laughs> mid 80s you know late 80s kind of uh guys and and so what was your initial introduction to D&D? I, I only came to play D&D really about three or four years ago. So I always love hearing um, how other people, you know, have been playing longer than I came to really get into the game and what, and what drew them in. What was your first experience playing D&D? So that one's a little tough because so my older brothers who's introduced me to D&D as far as getting into actual playing sessions. My first experience with D&D was the, my cousin, well, my aunt specifically um, played D&D, her and her husband and, oh, and cool. some friends of theirs back in the eighties, they played and they had the D&D board game where it was a two-sided board. Right, you had your right. field map and you had a dungeon map. 
and the you had the dwarf, the elf, the human, like everything was done by race instead of class. And that was my first exposure to D D, but it was a board game and not the role play. Um, and then through playing magic, uh, we kind of made some friends. I, it was me and two brothers. I have a younger brother and older brother. And my older brother, through making friends through magic, started to learn more and more about uh, you know D and D specifically, um, AD and the advanced, the second edition of AD of D and D. Right. But we only had the like the fighters manual. Like we just didn't have a lot of money. You have what book? There's so many books out there. We we had the fighters manual, and I think he had a player's manual. But this would be ninety four, ninety six. Sure. Uh, when when we first got into this and so we could only play fighters that was the only thing he let us play <laughs> okay. uh, but we had a great time you know we were the best right, yeah. fighters you could be uh, <laughs> you do one thing long enough you get really good at it yeah and so we were only really allowed to be fighters and then i found um uh, the complete ninja and bought that at a garage sale i think it was or a bookstore and i'm like oh i want to be a ninja and he wouldn't let me Oh, I just man. had one of those other brothers like that, you know? Right, right. Because he's like, no, we're, we're fighters. You can't be a ninja. So, and it was moments like that, you know, where my other brother would always kind of, if something bad was going to happen in a campaign, it was probably going to happen to me. Right, uh, right. As the younger brother. Bring, bringing and, that off-table bias into the session. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And his his best friend was going to get the the reward. And I was going to get the carrot on a stick, you know? And so that's kind of what got me into DMing. It was, I don't want to be my other brother's sure, know, yeah. punching bag in these games. So I'm going to start my own games and played a few friends and, and got more and more into storytelling. But reading uh, fantasy novels is what really got me into uh, DMing and telling stories. Um, so what, what were, yeah. What were some of those, what were some of those books? Well, it, it's the Dragonlance books. Oh, I mean, yes. The, the, the Chronicles. Yeah. Um, and, and one of the nice things about Twitter is I've had the pleasure of having several conversations with Margaret Weiss. Oh, wow. That's on Twitter, awesome. just back and forth. And it, it, it's been nice to connect with. That's one of the powerful things about Twitter is you do have the chance to connect with some of these people um, that you respect in the community. But you when critical role was fairly new having back-to-back -back conversations with Matthew Mercer. Now that just doesn't happen. I mean, the guy's sure, yeah. too popular for that to happen, but, uh, but yeah, no, Margaret Weiss is Tracy Ekman, the authors of the Dragonlance Chronicles. That's what really tied me into the game to a point where I went and bought the Dragonlance setting, uh, you know, with what money I could put together. I bought the Council of Worms setting that was redone for Dragonlance and just tried to find anybody I could to play. But, you know, in the 90s, the, the list of people that played D&D &D was very small. Which is a little ironic because now you have so many people who want to play and are desperately out there looking for a DM. And <laughs> in, the, in the 90s, you were like, please, somebody come play my game. Yeah. Yeah, it's... uh it, it, it's tough to look back and say, man, the, the 13 year old me would be the most popular kid today. <laughs> <laughs> right. You'd be streaming, yeah. you'd have a million followers on Twitch. Yeah. Like yeah. You're, you're just a decade too early. It's like, well, you know, everything in the player's handbook. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Awesome. I'm that cool. I, I'd like to. <laughs> yeah, it's, right. So, so my, my, my little cousins and niece and nephews think I'm cool. Um, because they they like D D and so you know the, it's been nice to see them so open about it too sure yeah they they tell their friends all about it it's it's the coolest thing to them a, a little jealous but it is really nice right, to right. see that there's going to be it, it's not going to end there's just going to be more and more generations of people that enjoy these games yeah i saw i saw someone on twitter speaking on twitter because um like you said, it's great. You can you can interact with anyone on there, right? So I, mm -hmm. I spend so much time on there more more really than I probably should. But um, I, I did see one idea going around. You know that for Halloween, uh, you know people should like distribute different dice and uh, you know kind of like the intro rules or whatever, like the the free release rules. And uh, 
and it's just funny to, funny to hear like ideas like that because man can you imagine like during the like the satanic panic era if you went <laughs> trick-or-treating and instead of having like a like a hershey bar you came home with you know like the devil dice or whatever <laughs> and now it's just something that like yeah. moms and like grandmas on twitter are like oh this is a great idea we should do this um, so it's just like culturally in the last you know 15 20 years it's just been such a huge shift and it's cool it's awesome yeah no it, it... I mean, handing out sets of dice for Halloween was probably the most expensive thing you could do right. uh, for anybody that has a dice addiction. They know sure. um, that it's it's not cheap. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely you're not going to have a witch hunt, uh, right? Right. As the household that gave out the free SRD for uh, for Adventure League, right? But. Uh, there there has been some very interesting suggestions from Twitter. It's really a nice source for inspiration. And I love following artists most specifically on Twitter. Because when my feed is full of this creative, you know, these are D&D characters or settings or maps, it helps keep me motivated in creating my own stuff. Totally. What, like, have you made, you know, obviously you've written a lot of different things, you've released them out. Um, what, is there one in particular that you're like really proud of that's out in the wild? You're like, man, you know what? I really nailed that. I really, you know, something, there was something special about it when I made it. Um, anything that kind of sticks out to you like that? Um, you know, it's, I almost have to look here on discord. There's an individual who's been helping me a lot with doing kind of reviews of, of the material. And it's there's been a few times where I've I've sent him something, and this individual is really good at kind of getting me to go, oh yeah, okay, maybe that is a little too much, sure. or wow, that is not that is not straightforward at all. It's very confusing. And there's the last two that have come out. Um, the warp blade is one of them. The one I just did for Rogue which I really like because it's not it. When you first read it, you kind of go, well, that's a little powerful. And then once you start figuring in the action efficiency of things, especially rogues, uh, you start to realize like, oh, it has a lot of tools there, but it's not overpowered because you have to really sacrifice when things start taking actions for rogues and not just bonus actions. Right. That's when you go, oh, okay. So I have to give up my sneak attack to do this but this could really help the party or me or even creating characters where most of the bulk of the, of the subclass is non-combat beneficial. You know, sure. those are the kind of things where I go, Oh, if a character seems fun to play, right. But it's not because they're combat abilities. It's their non-combat abilities. That's a success in my mind. Totally. Because so many people factor in combat for fifth edition as the funnest part of the game. Or for me, it's the tool set that you have outside of combat that also builds so much of the game. Dude, totally. And that's what that's what's kind of cool. Um, like you were saying about 5e, kind of the structure for characters and for classes. Um, just I, I think it it's a really good foundation for people to go and build, you know, new ideas on that are just as just as usable, just as functional as something that wizards might put out. Um, I was talking to someone recently who was, you know, that's one of his favorite things about the community is that there's so much out there that really has kind of even exceeded what wizards has put out. Right. Like, you know, like mm -hmm. so your warp blade for exa example. And, and by the way, people have um, just, you know, this is a kind of night crawler esque subclass for the rogue. It's, it's a lot of bamfing and, and translocating mm -hmm. um, some very cool abilities. So, so you should definitely, um, We'll, we'll throw out social links later, but you should definitely go check this out. But yeah, there are just so many cool opportunities to you know push stuff beyond what the official books have. Um, and, and even I've noticed lately, even in the official books, they've kind of started moving that way a little bit. So like in, I think it was in Xanthar's that one of the rogue subclasses, I think, is the Inquisitor Rogue, um, which is you know a lot of of kind of like detection and you know kind of mm -hmm. um seeing you know unseen things uh we're playing my wife and, and our, our our group right now are going through water water deep dragon heist and she decides she want to play rogue and that was the kind of rogue she went with and um she totally dumped like decks or something like you know she every stat you should take as a rogue she did not take and our dm was telling mm -hmm. me he was like i don't know why she's doing this like like she's gonna be miserable as a rogue 
but like she is blowing up social encounters. Like, just like you were saying, it's, it's beyond, you know, just what happens in combat in the game. Like when you have a class that really empowers you to, to play the entirety of the game and not just battle, it really, it creates a whole new experience for everyone at the table. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, we have a, a home game here that we had a couple wins, a couple Sundays ago where my character's a minotaur barbarian and he's not the brightest child out there. <laughs> sure. And he sees two ogres in the roadway arguing with each other over a, a, something they killed, you know, some game that they killed. And they start to kind of roughhouse a little bit. And then, so I run out there and I start agging them on, like, fight, fight, fight. And and the DM's like, uh, roll, roll persuasion. And I don't have a high charisma, but I rolled well. And he's like, yeah, they start to fight. <laughs> and I'm like, I got right. the winner. You know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, the encounter, which he intended to be kind of this, you know, difficult early level encounter with two ogres turned into a humorous small little social encounter of right, right. where it was a couple charisma rolls and then some grappling checks and the minotaur wrestled the the ogre to the ground and so they were allowed to pass because you know he beat him in his feet of strength right uh, but it wasn't like we pulled weapons and we killed the the ogres it's I find more and more of uh, games when I DM or as a player, a lot of players are starting to find non-combat solutions for, for their games. Yeah, and it's sure. nice to see. Yeah, just, um, you know, and, and I never played uh, 4, but I, but I hear a lot of people talk about it and talk about, you know, the math involved and, you know, kind of the, the I guess, more combat-centric. Again, having never played, this is mm-hmm. only just what I hear. Um, and a lot of people that have played previous editions obviously not everyone has the same opinion but i've heard a lot of people talk about how like you know fifth is is a little freeing in that way and that it gives Mm. you you know the the structures are a little bit looser a little more streamlined and really kind of gives you um the ability and opportunity to you know like like solve puzzles uh you know 15 different ways instead of always coming at it with an axe right yeah uh, you know, the, the people that I have spoken to that, that aren't big fans of fifth edition, when I play in other games with them, I find more and more that they, they are the type that doesn't ever role play. They don't, they, they play D and D to roll dice and kill creatures and collect loot. They're not looking to role play. They want to, they want to roll all their checks for intelligence or persuasion. They don't, they're just there to roll dice and that's fine. Th- those people are going to find a table that they can play at um there, there's a group out there for them but for me i've i want i want a performance you know I, I, if i'm going to persuade someone i want to try and be persuasive right for sure it, it makes the table experience a lot more enjoyable yeah and, and like you said you know the one of the great things about the game is that there really is a table for everybody right like there is a mm-hmm. group like you are not alone in what you want to do playing this game like your personality yeah. can find a match anywhere. And especially today with so many tools like roll 20 or, or discord or, or, um, you know, different kind of social channels to connect you with other players. You're not even limited to your town anymore. Right. You, you can, mm-hmm. you can find a dude in Romania or China or wherever you want to play. Um, you know, who's going to fit your kind of game. And, and that's really, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a cool thing. Like the, the community that can spring up, um, not just from your physical table, but from your digital one as well. Yeah, we play a text RP uh, game on on my Discord, um, which is just Fjord's Forge. And it started out, we had a lot of people, because people are trying it out. It's mostly been whittled down to kind of a core group of of five to six people that try and show up when we can do games. We try and do them every other Saturday morning, if possible. And there were some people that when they know combat's going to happen, they show up. And there's other people that when they know it's just going to be just kind of the text banter, they're the ones that show up. Uh, and, and so you kind of see that like they're picking and choosing their times to be a part of it when it fits their play style. Yeah. You know, if they're a more combat driven player, they're not going to want to be there. When I preface with be prepared to type, there will be two <laughs> sessions of, of conversation because text RP games do not go quickly. That, that so, is true. 
I, I did uh, there's been back that. in the 90s. I, I, I was on one forum that had a, a text RP. And so, I mean, the thread was, you know, I, I think it probably hit a thousand pages at some point. And it, I mean, it's exactly oh, what wow. you're, I, I know this is back before you could just, I suppose we could have gone into a chat room that would have made more sense. But, uh, but yeah, no, it's, you really got to work your fingers out before, before those, those sessions. Yeah. Well, and it, it is probably the most challenging DMing I've ever done because it's live text play. It's not play by post, so sure you know every you you've got to be respectful of those that that don't type at the same speed. So I'm as a DM, I'm trying to read what someone has just typed, and on top of that, be mindful of the fact that I think this player might be trying to do this, and try and keep those faster typers from you know rolling over. Those those slower people that want to really be careful and put out a crafted, you know, statement every time they post something. So it, I'm completely exhausted. Some games by the time I'm done right, keeping right. up with the players, the more people on there, the more you got to keep up with. Running a live game is so much easier. For sure. So you, you mentioned Discord. Let's actually talk about that. Um, sure. Tell, tell me about uh, about what it is, kind of how it came to be, and and everything you have going on there. Well, so to to tell you about Discord, um, I probably have to tell you about the origin of Fjord because so I I had an opportunity to meet a lot of great people last year when I joined. I'm really into a video game called Ark Survival Evolved, yeah. and through Twitter, and I believe I found it through Twitter, but. I came across this post that talked about play arc through in an RP server, you know, handcrafted stories, interactive, you know, player environments. Right. Um, you build your, your community and you interact with these other communities and there'll be these events and, and progressive story going with it. So I really bit into that. I was like, I love arc. I love building things. Cause that was my big thing. I played on Xbox for a long time, built a lot of, big huge structures entire towns and had somewhat of 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 a notoriety on certain servers for making cool things and so i'm like well i'm gonna do that again and so i i had just recently gotten a decent pc and put put arc on there joined the server put a character on there and i just named him fjord the builder and because i wanted to be a builder in this right. arc world so I posted a story, a background about Fjord and how he was um, born in a family of like barbarian kind of amazon type Goliath people. But he was born a dwarf, not like a dwarf dwarf, but born with dwarfism. Okay. And he was always looked down upon. And But everybody had to p- contribute. So he got put to the side to work with a blacksmith and he learned how to build and work with his hands. And eventually he started building their village into this village of stone, something that would last and preserve his village. And cause they were always building out of wood and, and he kind of built the notoriety for that. And then took that story into the, the arc server, which was done by uh, dragon punk, which is a modding company for arc. Well, they do mods for, for a lot of things, but specifically they're making mods for arc right now. Okay. And, so I got in there, met some amazing people, and I built friendships that I with people I still talk to almost as, as often as possible. And developed this character Fjord that people seem to really enjoy. And I really started to uh, attach myself to him. I always had a different gamer's name I used for everything. But then it's like, no, I'm Fjord. Like this is Fjord is he's nice, <laughs> he's polite. He's uh, always the first one to encourage somebody else. I loved the character's energy and wanted to keep that going and turn yeah, it into awesome. a Twitter handle. And so really, when you're interacting with me on Twitter, you're interacting with Fjord, um, who's a better person than me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Which is and, cool because a lot of people go to D&D to play a worse version of themselves sometimes. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's cool yeah, that you can have an the, aspirational version, yeah. The Thieves Guild. Right. Murder uh, Hobo. You know, murder yeah. Hobo, yeah. Uh, no, it's, you know, it, so, and from there, 
I, I really enjoyed using Discord through gaming, uh, through PC gaming and all that, and said, well, why couldn't I just do Discord, but with a D&D community, like a community that not only helps people maybe find groups, and there's, I think, six D&D groups that actually use the Discord through private channels, uh, but also as a place to bring small-time and big-time creators together to share their work in a not-as-public forum as Twitter or Facebook or Instagram and kind of say, hey, what do you think of this? Like, am I getting better? Am I getting worse? Um, there's there's one artist on the Discord who does wood burning who from day one to today, like the perf- the 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 skill level has just gone through the roof. That's awesome. And seeing that progression as he posts every week, he posts something new and seeing him taking on harder and harder uh, projects. And I, I I hope that the, the discord server has been good motivation for him in, in, in trying harder things and doing better. Everybody's had great responses to him, bring writers and, and, digital photographer, you know, anybody that does any kind of art medium that wants to share it, uh, writes homebrew, just wants to bring their group to a digital space. They're all welcome in to Fjord's Forge. And that's kind of was the goal is just to be this open forum for people to make use of the space and communicate. And I'd like to continue to drive that and, and make it bigger to the point where I can't do it by myself. I want to someday have to have people help me i want it to be a destination totally uh would be great and and i would say to any of you out there uh who are like me and you know despite being you know a millennial are still um a little set in your ways it took me a while uh, literally until i started talking to fjord to really say okay you know what i have to give discord a try so i'm on i'm on the discord and and you know what it might seem intimidating at first but it definitely you know as as i've scrolled through and um kind of you've talked about it it really is a great um, kind of catalyst for community like you're talking about for you know really kind of like iron sharpens iron kind of thing like you're trying to set up with the forge so um, I definitely encourage you guys to to check it out you know don't let don't let the idea of downloading a new app uh, scare you away because um, there's lots of great interaction to be had um, with fellow you know fellow fellow nerds gamers people of a of a similar mindset it's a great place to kind of go and and really kind of grow in the things you're trying to do like you said especially for creators yeah it, it for for a lot of people it's finding that community you feel safe in and the tabletop rpg community is a very open and accepting community but you hear all these horror stories of of people getting getting picked on and bullied online and that really does happen so it's it's nice to create some place where these people can go and know that that's not going to happen here like right. if it was i would act on it immediately you know if i heard from anyone that there was somebody you know putting out that negative energy that's not what we're there for you know everybody that's joined it kind of has a social agreement and understanding that we're all human beings and we're all here to have fun. And some of us enjoy gaming and some of us enjoy art and some of us enjoy reading. Some of us just like to share memes and, you know, some, some of those memes are, you know, are silly and fun. And some of them are like, Whoa, that's a little dank, but you know, <laughs> they're, they're there to kind of share what they're interested in. Right. And as long as you're not trying to intentionally, harm anyone then it's that social acceptance that everybody is different right that kind of mutual opinion. mutual trust and, and safety yeah. and space for each other yeah and and ideally like if someone does have an, an adverse opinion to mine i love discussing these kind of things you know if i'm not a huge fan of the current star wars I'm just not i grew up with mm, the preach. original trilogy oh. Yeah. Keep, just keep going. You're saying all the right yeah. things. <laughs> so it's it's hard for me to see what they've done. <laughs> um, and so I try not to be super vocal about that on Twitter because there's a lot of people that absolutely love the neutral. Sure. And they should. If that's that if that's their thing, love it. But it's not for me. And, you know, that's and you have yeah, to be okay yeah. with that. Yeah. You have to be okay with that some people aren't going to agree with you and allow them to disagree with you. And, and there's a definite 
social skill, I think, and and doing exactly what you said, being able to be okay with somebody who disagrees with you and being able to express something that you feel, whether that's fandom or politics or music mm-hmm. or, or whatever you might be into, and being able to still be civil with people. That is that is one of the things that I think I kind of see in, in all fandoms these days where people start to identify themselves with their viewpoint versus their view, viewpoint kind of being an expression of who they are, right? Mm-hmm. Where where then, you know, if somebody disagrees with how you feel about The Last Jedi, it's no longer them disagreeing with your opinion on a film. It's them disagreeing with something fundamental about you. And so yeah. being able to separate who you are from what you like and have conversations with people about that, it's really valuable and it's really important and it really lets you develop friendships and relationships when you don't have that as a barrier to communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I mean, everybody has their hot points and I felt like when it, you know, I I made a response to they're doing the, the unearthed arcanas and they're hitting up every class. And when they hit monk, which already is a pretty powerful class to begin with. Sure. And then they gave monk, I think like nine attacks by 17th level with that most recent unearthed arcana. Yeah. Yeah. It was a bit of a hot point for me. I'm like, why would you build such an insanely powerful build? There's the, there's no other monk I would choose besides this one. It has a 10 foot reach, can do radiant or necrotic damage, attacks seven times or something like that for 1d10 damage at 17th level, adding an additional d10 on one of those attacks just for the heck of it. Like It just felt like someone had this power fantasy and they're like i'm gonna make this and it's gonna be awesome and then they posted it under the wizards of the coast banner and people were like some people were like yeah that's amazing i can't wait to play one of those and there's other people that are like that is not balanced that needs to go away sure (laughs) and i felt like i was a little too harsh because i communicated with one of the people that was a contributing author um, I, I don't feel like I was rude, but I also should not have commented on his post saying, Hey, look at this thing I did. And I hated that I did that. And a couple hours later, I just messaged him. I made a post messaging him directly saying, Hey, I feel like I acted inappropriately. I removed my comments. I made a separate post because I still believe in what I said, but I don't think I said it in the right place. Sure. And I hope all is well for you. And that creator and I still talk to this day. He understands that I disagreed with him, but he disagrees with me and thinks that it's, you know, a good build. And that's fine right. because we agree on other things, right? which means we can still be cordial and friendly with each other. And I look for his posts and I enjoy his posts. Uh, but in that time, you know, it takes, it's important to say, Hey, okay, I screwed up and I need to admit that. Definitely directly which, which to those that I may probably may too few hurt. people do these days. Right. We, we, we don't think we type and we tweet and then, uh, and then, you know, maybe well, we hurt someone and we don't think to go back and say, Hey, you know what? Let me, let me roll that back. Let me, you know, give you the response I should have taken, you know, five minutes and, and done in the first place. Yeah. It's so often it's, Oh, a bunch of people disagree with me. So now I need to apologize. It's right. right. Oh, I think I did a bad thing. I'm going to apologize whether or not anybody else thinks I should or not. Like, because that's really the way it should be. If you're going to apologize, you should be apologizing because you believe you did something wrong, not because everyone else did. Right. Because then a, it just makes you a hypocrite. Yeah, it's not about so. pressure. It's about being genuine, for sure. Yeah. And and you know, kind of circling back to something you you said earlier, that is that is something that I've kind of appreciated about the you know the tabletop RPG and D and D community on on Twitter. It's a very you know for the most part a very open, accepting you know group, right? And there's a mm-hmm. lot of of support for each other you know people aren't afraid to call out hey you know what you were kind of being a dick here um or or having people's backs when when something goes wrong and and just in general in life right like whatever we can do as people we're only on this earth for a little bit of time yeah so whatever we can do to foster you know you know joy and love with people like like whether it's online or in person that's what we should be doing there's there's times where you'll see someone who posts and and they're they're new in the creative process. They're they're long toothed in it. Something they they're there as a creator, but every once in a while you'll get a post that pops up from one of those people that's making something, where it's just them talking about how tired they are. 
And right. going on there and saying, hey, you know, it'll be okay, even if it's from a stranger, it's still that's what they're they're looking for your support from a human being standpoint, not from a creative standpoint. Exactly, exactly. You know, and that's the nice thing about the the Twitter community is many times that that people will go, you know, I understand that you're a human being first. And the second thing you do is create content that I love to consume. But the first thing you do is you're a human being, and I still appreciate you for both. And the the tabletop community is is wonderful at doing that. It's incredibly accepting. Absolutely. Um, well, hey man, we're we're up against it. But uh, before we before we finish up, you got anything on the horizon that you're excited about? Anything you're working on? Obviously, that uh, you said like the background um, is coming up. Anything else you want to share with people? Well, um, right now, yeah, there's there's me and two other creators, um, Bob the World Builder and um, uh, bastard of buffalo i <laughs> he's got the um, two fantastic the usernames both names. of them <laughs> yeah, yeah uh let's see um yeah bastard of buffalo i always feel like i get that wrong uh we've been toying around with this idea of that once all three of us hit 2000 followers we're gonna get a one shot out there so it's something we've been working on and i've even kind of asked around a little bit to see you know people out there that make maps um it, apparently map makers you know the, it's it's a long process and, sure. and they're not cheap you know to get a map um but i you know there that is something that i'm not much of an artist you know i've i've done an art contest on on fjord's forge before that did well we we did an art contest for just to, hey make some fan art for the elementalist which is the new D and D five E class that that was put together that wasn't out of the book. It was a brand new class that kind of mixes the strengths of of a barbarian with a fighter with a druid. It's not taking what's what they all. It's not taking over what those all do best, but yeah, kind of creates this like this guardian of nature and life. And so I wanted to. There's no art that supports that because it's never been created before um so i ran an art contest and had some great participants and some fun art from the community and you know those people are members of the discord now uh, but i might do something like that looking f- not necessarily looking for a contest but we might try and reach out to someone that because it's going to be free to the twitter community yeah either someone that wants to donate their time that can help us with the map or or maybe take a map that we do and make it look better something like that sure, somebody yeah. that's willing to do it in so that if, sense. if you're a so, map maker out there and you're listening to this yeah uh, yeah map hit, makers, hit, hit your join the yeah. discord <laughs> come join the discord <laughs> um be part of something yeah. cool yeah um so we're kind of working on that one shot um it, but it, there's still it's so early right now there's kind of an outline theme and 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 we're building upon that um, I'm working on a background cause there is kind of a, a, a roadmap on my Twitter that kind of says what I'm going to do. But once that roadmap is complete, I want to put everything together. I'm going to do a second revision on all the classes, uh, which I've already done a second revision on the oath of life paladin, which is being play tested in one of our games right now. And I want to do a second revision and put everything together and provide an opportunity where, Hey, if someone wants I will get some books in in this situation. I would have to charge for things because I would like to make sure. some hard bound books, actually not hard get bound, it, but actually get some it like actual printed. books. Sure. And, and there's an artist friend of mine, uh, Russ Richards art who has done some character art for me in the past for, for uh, my nieces, my niece, my two nieces and nephew, their characters. And he might do some art for the book and it might be a, combination of like my writing his art and then he would he does a lot of conventions and we probably test it out at conventions to see how well it sells um but i will create a culmination of everything and there will be like a pdf version for free on discord because i always cool. want a i always want my material to be free in some way or form like sure yeah. there may be a way to buy it because we did this extra piece with it it's got someone's art and art has to be paid for yeah, for sure. Yeah, art's art's just not free. So people put a lot of work into that, and there's there's different legal rights to it. Um, but if it was a book with art, it, it should be 
it should be re- monetarily rewarded because of the hard work that put hard work that was put in. Totally. But when it comes to just the text material, regardless of the fact that I've put hundreds of hours into it, I feel like it's my way of just saying, Hey community, enjoy this. I enjoyed writing it. Please enjoy reading it. So eventually there will be a PDF book and then a, maybe a physical book. And I would be really excited if we did do a physical book. So that's awesome, man. We'll definitely, um, you know, look forward to that. Uh, it, it's great to kind of, you know, it would be great to have that, that total PDF, right. For people who want to immediately have a lot of additional options to the game. Mm-hmm. So we'll yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I have that the book together. in front of you guy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, awesome dude. Um, let us know where can people find you on social media? Where can they check your stuff out? So you can always find me on Twitter at Fjord the Builder. Uh, and, and you'll find just spell that real quick for I'm people talking. who uh, you know are not oh, sure. Fjord native. Um, it's Fjord, F-J-O-R-G, the Builder. Um, and you can also find a link in my Twitter to our Discord, which is Fjord's Forge. So there's a link right there. We don't have our own private uh, link with our name for Discord, so I can't really give the link for Discord on on here but you can find it through twitter awesome and then we also run a uh, world of warcraft classic horde guild which has actually been the most popular thing on our server currently um so you can always join fjord's forge and join us uh battling the alliance on in wild classic that's awesome, man. Well, hey, dude, thank you so much uh, for the time and for the great content you're putting into the community. Um, can't wait to see you know what you have uh, you know around the around the curve. Hey, I've really appreciated it. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun. Absolutely, man. Um, well, again, everyone uh, that has been Fjorg of Fjorg's Forge, um, I am Andrew Richardson, and this has been Roll for Persuasion. As always, make sure you check us out on Twitter and Instagram at Roll Persuasion. Uh, Find us on your favorite podcast app, Spotify, Overcast, iTunes, whatever you may use. Please make sure you check us out, subscribe, hit us up on social media. Let us know what you think. If you are a creator in the community and you want to be on the show, reach out to me. I love talking to new people and discussing new things. But until then, I am Andrew Richardson, and this has been Roll for Persuasion. Roll for Persuasion.